Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Tuesday. I hope you are all well and you're having a good start to the week. First of all, a bit of a note, disclaimer, whatever. Uh, sorry if I'm looking pretty rough today. <laughs> sorry if my voice goes all weird during this because I am feeling pretty awful. I've got to say very much about the man flu. I've been sweeping around the house. My kids have had it, my wife's had it and now I've got it. So struggling away, so apologies for that, but I will do my best to get through this video as we are now not too far away from Arsenal returning to action. Um, although saying that they did kind of against Watford, but that was a behind closed doors game. But this Thursday's game, the first game of the Dubai Super Cup for Arsenal when they take on Leon over in Dubai, it would of course be televised. You have to watch it on Arsenal's app. Um, and the players are over there at the moment going through the training camp and uh, yeah, looking very good. Looks like they're enjoying themselves as you would expect. And I can't wait to actually watch it on Thursday. It's just felt so long. You go back to that Wolves game. Just seems so long ago now, doesn't it? I mean, there's been lots of entertainment between then and now with the World Cup. It's been great, but still, it just feels going to feel very nice watching Arsenal again on Thursday. Looking forward to that. So we'll look at that in this video. Go through what sort of team we might expect to see line up, certainly in the first half. I mean, there's going to be hosts of changes for the second half, but we'll have a look at what sort of team we suggest will probably line up in the first half for that game. Uh, also look back on what's been going on at the World Cup with Arsenal players in action as well okay so let's start with that game against Leon on Thursday the Lacazette derby uh, so to speak seeing the reunion and Lacquer coming um, it's going to be an interesting game I think I mean the, when you look at what Mikel did with the Watford game in that behind closed doors friendly played the sort of senior players for the first half completely changed things in the second half and put in all the under 21s and made 10 outfield changes I don't think he'll do it the same way this time just because I mean, it might be a little bit like lambs to the slaughter if you suddenly just chuck on all the under 21s to play, you know, what probably be a strong Leon side in that second half. So I reckon, I reckon some of the under 21s will get a chance, but um, I'm not sure it'll be the sort of whole host of changes that Arteta did last time. It might sort of drip feed it through and um, give some of them a run out. It'll be exciting to see some of them. Ethan Wanieri's obviously over there, 15 years old. We saw him briefly in that game against Brentford when he broke all records in the Premier League early in this season. This could be our first real proper look at him in an Arsenal shirt, so looking forward to that. But in terms of who we're going to see start, um, now obviously lots of players aren't there yet because they're over at the World Cup and some of the players who've been knocked out recently like Thomas Partey, Tommy Asu, yeah, they're not going to be there yet um, either but um, the goalkeeper is pretty obvious I think that's going to be high in goal just because Ramsdale's in, um, still over in action in the World Cup and Matt Turner I don't think from what I've heard I don't think he's gone straight to Dubai um, he'll probably have, be having a little bit of downtime well deserved as well because I thought he had a fantastic World Cup Matt Turner um, so I imagine it'll be Hein in goal and then you're probably looking at Cedric at right back in the first half. Uh, Centre-backs, I imagine it's going to be Rob Holding and Gabriel Kieran Tierney at left back. Um, Mohamed Elneny didn't play in the game against Watford, I don't think, Elneny. Um, I think possibly because they might have had some international stuff going on with Egypt. So he had a little bit of extra rest, but he's over in Dubai. I wouldn't be surprised if Elneny plays as a kind of holding midfielder in that first half. And then you're either going to have, you'll certainly have Martin Odegaard starting. And it's kind of who plays alongside Martin Odegaard. You would think, would he play? Would he go with Fabio Vieira, who, like El Nenny, didn't play in the Watford game, but is over in um, in Dubai because he had some uh, international commitments with the Portugal under 21s during the break, so he had a little bit longer off than everyone else. But he is back and he is in Dubai. So would you play him? I'm not quite sure, maybe because he's going to be a little bit further behind. You might see him in the second half. So I reckon you'll probably see Sambi playing as a number eight alongside Martin Odegaard, and then up front. I imagine it's going to be Reese Nelson, Marquinhos. Marquinhos scored in the game against Watford, obviously. And then Eddie Nketiah, who also scored in that game against Watford, will be leading a line. And then all these youngsters that have made the trip, you like to see Wanieri's and, and people like that. I imagine they'll, they'll be coming on in the second half, be getting a bit of an opportunity and um, and some minutes, which they will, yeah, should be a good experience for them. Vieira... The likes of Vieira, maybe El Nenny as well, because he did return a little bit later. Maybe they will have to start the game on the bench and come on, but I'm not sure. I think El Nenny will probably squeeze into the starting 11, but who knows? It's going to be very hard. It's hard enough to predict to start an 11 in the Premier League, let alone in a pre season friendly, well, mid season, pre season friendly against Leon. But looking forward to it. And um, yeah, it's just going to be nice seeing Arsenal out in their uh, red and white strip again as well, with the whole added thing of Lacazette playing alongside so let me know what you think who do you want to see start who you're looking forward to seeing over in this Dubai Super Cup what players can really stand out I've said it before I think Fabio Vieira this is a big opportunity for him um, given he missed out on all pre-season because he was injured this is a good opportunity for him to get away play train 
in this training camp environment and really sort of kick on ahead of the second half of the season. Looking forward to seeing Gabriel back as well, seeing if he's sort of responded from the disappointment of missing out on the World Cup. And Eddie, this is a big, big opportunity for Eddie. We don't know, and I'll talk about Gabriel Jesus in a second. We don't know yet on him. So for Eddie, whatever happens, you'd think he's definitely going to be starting against West Ham on Boxing Day. Um, and you just want to go into that game with your confidence up a little bit. So I think Fede can get himself a couple of goals in these next few games in Dubai and the one back at Juventus against Juventus at the Emirates would be a really big thing for him because he's got such a big job on his hands coming up. So yeah, from that, it's a nice way into Gabriel Jesus. Now, unfortunately, we still don't have any definitive news on Jesus. He has flown back to England. He's been with Arsenal for the last couple of days. He saw specialists in London to, uh, to sort of determine the true extent of this knee injury and to find out how long he is out for now as of yet that has not been announced by either side what the results of those tests are I'm sure it will come pretty soon just because um well first of all Mikel Arteta is going to be facing questions from the press over in Dubai fairly soon after I'm not sure they're doing anything before the game against Lyon but they'll certainly do something afterwards and so the questions will be being you know sent at Mikel Arteta so I'd imagine that Arsenal would want to clear things up before Arteta starts getting questions on it and um, so at least then journalists know what to ask Mikel and he knows how to respond as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get that news over today, uh, tomorrow, but ahead of that game against Lille on Thursday. Um, fingers crossed, but we'll have to wait and see. It's uh, clearly a very worrying situation when it comes to James And that's what I mean about Eddie and Ketia. It's a really big opportunity for him. And if he can get his confidence up, if he can get himself a couple of goals in these games, albeit in friendlies, I just think that'd be really important because we're going to need Eddie and Ketia to hit the ground running when Arsenal return for the Premier League against West Ham on Boxing Day because they need his goals. Not just his goals, they need his work rate. He's not going to be Gabriel Jesus. The dynamic of Arsenal team, I think, is going to change. It has to because Jesus, what he brings, what he offers, has been so transformative to this Arsenal team, even if he hasn't scored as many goals as maybe we were all expecting after that brilliant start to the season. But even when he hasn't been scoring, he's still been so, so important to the way they play, to the way everyone around him plays. And, um, you know, whether Eddie can do that, I doubt it. But he's got his own qualities and hopefully he can take advantage of that and make a big impact in uh, however long he is going to be used as the uh, central striker. Um, Looking at the World Cup, bad day for Tommy Asu in Japan. Yes, I thought they played well. I thought they were very unlucky to lose against Croatia. Um, obviously going out in penalties, dreadful penalties from Japan. Just awful penalties. Missed three out of the four. And... Um, um, yeah, just a really disappointing World Cup way to go out of the World Cup for them anyway. And Tommy Asu's been speaking about that in the mix zone. He spoke to a few journalists before the game, uh, after the game. Sorry, it's really interesting comments from him. He's so critical of himself, Tommy Asu, always, whenever he speaks after games. And I thought he played well yesterday. It was a mistake in the first half, I think, the back pass that didn't make it to the goalkeeper, which gave um, Croatia one opportunity. But other than that, I thought he played pretty well. The fact he made 120 minutes as well with the injury issues that he's had, I thought was really impressive. And um, this is what he had to say in the mix zone afterwards to some of the journalists. I think he was speaking to Sam Dean, he's over there. You probably know him, really good, excellent Arsenal reporter. He works for the Telegraph and he's over there. And he spoke to Tommy Asu in the mix zone. And he said, my performance was a disaster today, so I'm so sorry for the team. I just need to be much, much better to help the team. It was not enough. And also for the team, we did not deserve to win. I can't be proud. I'm not satisfied about what happened. This is football. We, we need to be much, much better to win against a stronger team. I just thought it was really harsh. I thought, I thought Japan were, were, were a better team, I have to say. I really did. And I thought Tommy Asu played pretty well. But obviously, he disagrees with me. Um, was very, very disappointed. I was, Sam was speaking in, his, in our WhatsApp group. He was speaking about how he met um, with Tommy Asu. And he said he was clearly really, you know, pretty distraught after that game. So hopefully, he can take a few days to get away from it all and to sort of... Put it, well, not put it behind them because it's very hard to do that. It was such a monumental, huge moment for Japan and, and they were so close to getting through as well. So the heartbreak, the disappointment is going to be massive. You can understand it. But he was asked, you know, are you going to go over to Dubai? He said, I don't know. Hopefully I can get a bit of a rest. I need time to forget about football. I need a bit of time. Now, <laughs> whether he gets that time remains to be seen because a big part of the fact that Arsenal got over to Dubai is so players who are knocked out of the World Cup can hop over and go and join up with the team because Mikel Arteta wants everyone there pretty much. To, uh, to do this training camp and this warm weather and, and these games in the Dubai Super Cup. He will get a bit of time, no doubt about it. You can't just say, literally say, right, it comes straight here because um, he's had no break. He's got the intensity of the World Cup and you need to you need to just relax a little bit, but I don't think he's going to get too long. Um, 
Arsenal play on Thursday, obviously, against Lyon, and then next week, I think it's Tuesday, the Milan game. So we'll wait and see when he comes back. But yeah, really disappointing for Tommy Asu, and um, I thought he played well, to be honest. So I'm not sure he needs to be quite as critical of himself as he has been. Um, Martinelli, however, good day for Martinelli. A great night for Brazil. I thought they were fantastic. I mean, the first half, it was, an, it was exhibition stuff, wasn't it? Fantastic goals, brilliant movement. I can't believe everyone's moaning about them dancing. I mean, oh, God, it drives me mad. I've had, I've had rants about this on videos before as well, with the whole celebration police. It just, it's like, so what if they dance? The only slightly thing where I can, I can understand it is a bit frustrating is the fact it eats into a lot of time. But the way this World Cup goes now, you know, all, the, that, all that added time is actually being added on now at the end of the half. So even that's not too much of an issue. But the fact that they're dancing, I mean, seriously, who cares? It's fun. It's just, ugh, why are you moaning about that? And it's always the same people as well. Your Roy Keynes, your Simon Jordans, people like that. It's just like, God, just suck all the fun out of football. It's Brazil. It's what they're about. It's like for one of my first earnest memories of the World Cup, Italia 90, was Brazilian fans in the group stages, the Brazil-Argentina game when Argentina knocked them out in the knockout rounds. And it was just, you know, it's always been that way. Just the Brazilian, the fans are dancing. The fact that the players dance, who cares? Honestly, enjoy it. Stop trying to suck the life out of football. Anyway, sorry, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent there, but a really good day for Martin. He came on, he um, replaced Vinicius in the second half. Didn't get didn't get a goal. It'd be great if he could get himself on the score sheet before the end of this World Cup. Hopefully not against England, though, if they play England, which would be in the final. Um, but yeah, good for Martinelli, good for Brazil. I mean, they still just look the favourites to me. I think England have been impressive. I think France, certainly with Mbappe, have been impressive at times. Although it kind of feels like Mbappe's doing a lot by himself at the moment. Um, Argentina are getting better. No doubt about it, but Brazil just looks something else. They're solid. When you do get through that back line, you've got to beat Alisson, which South Korea just couldn't really do yesterday, apart from obviously the goal from distance, which was deflected. And Alisson made some big, big saves in that. And then when you go forward and you've got the options that they have in sort of attacking midfield and up front, scary, scary prospects. So I think if you beat Brazil, you'll win the World Cup, basically. But we shall wait and see. All right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. As always, appreciate it. Anything you agreed with, disagreed with, please do let me know in the comments below. Have a very good end to your day, and I'll speak to you soon.